Hi, my name is Zachary Vex, and this is the first Invento Box video showing you what it's like when you first receive your Invento Box from the store. Remove the protective bubble pack, which you can pop later at your own leisure. Take it out of the plastic bag, and then voila, Invento Box. Now let's see what this thing comes with. There are two boxes of jumper wires of a variety of lengths. There's a bag full of cables that are used to connect the upper and lower halves of the Invento box together. Instruction sheet, module overview, stickers to label the controls, a work stand, spare potentiometers, a tiny screwdriver for removing the knobs, a wrench for removing the potentiometers and moving them around, and foam, which I'll explain later. Here's how you open an Invento box. You remove the four thumb screws in the upper half. They're in the corners. When you receive your Invento box, it's going to have a fuzz factory on channel one with a tone stack. That base, mid, and treble is connected to the tone stack on channel one. And the channel two on the left-hand side of the switch is going to be that boost control you see on the upper left there. Now when you flip the thing over, you can set it right on top of the switches and it kind of locks into place so you can work on it. Then inside the Invento box, You'll see there's a work light you can turn on and take a look inside where the cables connect to those little jacks, which we'll explain later. The whole thing is kind of a nest of cables and jumper wires and modules and maybe kind of confusing to look at, but it's actually pretty simple to work with. Now everything is totally different. This Invento box is empty. It doesn't have any stickers on it. There are no cables, no wires, and no modules inside yet. The first thing we have to do is remove all of the knobs. Why do we remove all the knobs? Well. In order to get all the controls in the correct places, we have to be able to remove the potentiometers and move them around. So we're going to take off the knobs with the little screwdriver. And then we're going to take a look at the edge of the tray. You can see there are schematic symbols there. She's pointing right at them. If we flip it over and take a closer look, you'll see that there are labels on each one of the pots that show the values. You can see a B10K in the middle there. So let's take off these pots by loosening up each one of the nuts with a wrench. You can spin it just far enough so that they're loose, and then you can run your finger across the edge of them, or your thumb in this case, and loosen them all up so they fall off. Put them in a safe spot. You might consider putting them in a small container. And then, once you've removed all of the washers and nuts, you can remove the two thumb nuts on the sides of the brass tray. Those thumb nuts are kind of interesting. Those are lamp parts that you can buy at any hardware store. And the brass tray itself serves as a metal shield, an electrostatic shield that keeps noise from getting into the circuit, which helps keep the circuit nice and quiet. Once you've taken off the brass tray, all the pots are loose. The only thing holding them in is gravity. Now the pots have been removed and can be moved around to any spot you want. We're going to figure out where that spot's supposed to be in just a moment. Now we have to decide where to put the stickers. I'm putting this boost sticker on the far left because I'm going to use the boost on channel 2. By putting the boost on channel 2, it lets us boost the output of the fuzz factory so we can make it louder. The fuzz factory really doesn't sound that great when you boost the input of it, so boosting the output seems to make the most sense. The stickers are easily removable. If you put one down and you think it's a little too crooked, you can take it off and put another one on. We give you some spares. Now we're going to put the tone stack in the lower right hand corner underneath the fuzz factory. The fuzz factory and the tone stack are both going to be applied on the first channel, which is on the right hand side. So it seems to make sense to put the knobs on the right hand side of the upper part of the box. Boy, that one's really crooked, huh? Oh well. Next, we put in the pots. Each one of the potentiometers that we have in our kit is labeled both on the back edge and on the front edge, showing what the value is. This one says C5K. It's used for the boost control. The letter C indicates that it's a reverse log pot. The 5K means it's 5,000 ohms. We set this into the position for boost, and then we'll look for the next pot, which is the volume control on the fuzz factory. It's a B2K. The way to know what each one of the values is, is to take a look at the module overview sheet that comes with your Invento box. As you can see, it says B2K on both sides. The letter B means linear. And the 2K, once again, is 2,000 ohms. The next three values are all B10K. That would be the gate, comp, and drive controls. 
They all happen to be the same. You gather up the three that you've got, pop them in place. The pots are held at the correct angle by the cutouts in that circuit board, that sort of comb-shaped cutout. The little square holes keep the pots pointed in the right direction. Now that we put in the last B10K, the final control is the stab control. That's another C5K. Once we've got that one in place, we have to figure out the values for the tone stack. The tone stack is going to go in our lower left-hand corner. If we put our finger onto the pot so that they can't fall, we can flip the whole thing over and take a peek to make sure that we know exactly where the controls are for these three. Bass, mid, and treble. The bass control, if I recall correctly, is a 1 meg. I think it's an A1M. That would be audio taper. The next control is the mid-range. That's a 20K, an A20K, audio taper once again. And the final control is an audio taper 250K. That's the treble control, A250K. Now, the next three controls are not going to be used in this particular case, so it doesn't really matter which pots you put in those. You can just put in whatever are left over randomly. And then we put the brass tray back on and tighten on the thumb screws. Now, you have to choose which direction to put on the brass tray. You can see there are red and black lines at the top right now. Those are the power connections. And in this particular case, those are actually supposed to be at the bottom on the side with the uh, tone controls. See those, those colored stripes up there? They really belong at the bottom with the tone control knobs. So let's take that off flip them around and put it right there. Yeah, exactly. It'll make it e assembly a lot easier this way. Once you've started to put all the jumper wires into the pots, it gets a lot harder to move the tray. In fact, it becomes impossible. <laughs> so you really want to get it right the first time. Next, we slip back on the washers and nuts and we'll tighten those all up with the wrench. You can just drop them in place and use the wrench going across to tighten them all up quickly. With the brass tray in place holding the pots, it makes it really easy. The pots can't fall out. They're all held at a nice firm angle. They can't twist around while you're tightening the wrench. It's actually a pretty ingenious design, if I do say so myself. Replacing the knobs. First, turn down all of the controls, fully counterclockwise, all the way to the left. Then, set the upper row of knobs in place. When you loosen them up, if you loosened up the, the um, set screws just a little bit, they're going to be really easy to put on now. Tighten the first knob so that the dot is located at 7 o'clock. Then, rest the screwdriver against the shaft of the lowest row leftmost pot, and it should be just about perfect for tightening the set screw in the second pot, or the second knob. And the same thing with the third one. Rest the screwdriver against the shaft of the lower pot, the second pot, and it goes at just the right angle for the third knob. Continue on in that pattern, and they'll all look nice and straight. Now remember, before you get started tightening these things down, you have to make sure that the pots are all turned fully down. Otherwise, you're going to end up with them really in weird positions. <laughs> when you're ready to work on the second row of pots, you set your knobs in place. You can just use the angles of the knobs above to decide where to place the dots match one to the other. It's the easiest way to do it. 